Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Mungwa, which is Swahili for strange one, or Nunda meaning fierce animal, is a cryptid reported from Tanzania's coastal forests. Described as a large, grey, man-eating feline with brindled stripes. Like its fellow East African man-eater, the Nandi bear, which I have covered on this channel before, it caused a general hysteria in the regions it attacked, and was the quarry of several European hunts, all of which failed to catch it. The Mungwa is said to be as big as the biggest lions, with greyish fur and brindled tabby-like stripes and markings. It is readily distinguished from the lion and the leopard by locals, and its tracks are said to resemble those of leopards. According to some eyewitnesses, it purrs instead of roaring. Western reports of the Mungwa first appeared during the early 20th century. The oldest purported sighting was made by British hunter Patrick Bowen. Alongside an accomplice, Bowen investigated a village where a Mungwa had, had carried off a little boy, and followed its spore into the forest. At first, Bowen assumed the culprit was a lion, but when the tracks crossed some hard, wet sand, making them exceptionally clear, it was obvious that they had not been made by a lion. They appeared to be the tracks of a leopard, but the paw prints were the size of those left by a lion. Some brindled hairs were found on the stakes where the Mungwa had forced its way into a kraal were also different from the hair of a leopard. This account has not been dated with any accuracy, and we are unsure as to when the events described actually took place. A series of alleged Mungwa attacks occurred in the village of Lindi near Tanganyika in 1922, when Captain William Hitchens was native magistrate. This was the same Hitchens that was involved in the hunt for the Nandi bear. As he recounted, it was the custom for native traders to leave their belongings in the village market every night, ready for the morning's trade and to prevent theft and also to stop stray natives sleeping in the marketplace. An Axkari or native constable took it in turns with two others to guard the market on a four hour watch. Going to relieve the midnight watch, an oncoming native constable one night found his comrade missing. After a search he discovered him, terribly mutilated, beneath a stall. The man ran to his European officer, who went with me at once to the market. We found it obvious that the Askari had been attacked and killed by some animal, a lion it seemed. In the victim's hand was clenched a matted mass of grey hair, such as would come out of a lion's mane were it grasped and torn in a violent fight. But in many years no lion has been known to come into the town. Hitchens was puzzling over the problem the next morning, when the Arab governor of the district arrived with two scared looking men at his heels. The men claimed that, out late the previous night, they said, they had slunk by the marketplace lest the Askari should see them and think them evildoers. And as they crept by they were horrified to see a gigantic brindled cat, the great mysterious Nunda which is feared in every village on the coast, leap from the shadows of the market and bear the policemen to the ground. The old Arab governor assured Hitchens that the Mungwa, which he described, had visited Lindy several times in his memory. That night, Hitchens kept watch with two armed Askaris at the market, but nothing happened. So at the next day's parade, he read the native constables a lecture on the stupidity of superstitions. However, that night another constable was killed, and he too clutched in his hands and scattered about the buckles of his uniform were more of that grey, matted fur. Whilst the terrified villagers paid a medicine man to scare off the Mungwa, Hitchin sent the fur off for expert examination, but the only reply he received that it was probably a cat. Several more attacks occurred at other small coastal villages over the following month, and a number of people arrived at Lindy to inform Hitchens that a huge, grey, striped animal, like a cat but as big as a donkey, was seizing men by night. Although traps and poison were set and armed police were posted around the district, the animal was never caught, and eventually the attacks ended as suddenly as they had begun. During the 1930s, another series of alleged Mungwa attacks occurred in Hitchens' district. One survivor of such an attack, an old and skilled native hunter, was brought to Hitchens at Machinga. Hitchens recorded that, 
Not long ago, a man was brought in to me at Machinga, a small Tanganyika coastal village, on a litter and terribly mauled by some great beast. He said it was a Mungwa, and as he himself was a brave and skillful hunter, who would have tracked down lions, leopards, and other killers with me and other white men, why should we suppose that in this case he mistook a lion or a leopard for some other beast? He had nothing to gain by telling me lies. On the contrary, as a hunter he depended for his livelihood on being absolutely truthful and trustworthy. On another occasion, at Lindy, another Tanganyika town, a Munga took to prowling the village at night, killing several villagers and, finally, a policeman on point at the market. For nights the whole town lived in fear, and although we doubled the police guards, we had difficulty in getting the men to go on to duty. But I have seen those same men rout a lion. They swore that this beast was not a lion, nor a leopard. We made every effort to waylay it, but unfortunately were not successful. Nor did we get a lion, as we might reasonably well have done if it was one. Investigators at the time of the Mungwa's killings ruled out lions and leopards as suspects on account of the animal's tracks, hair and size. However, Carl Schuka suggests that the Mungwa could conceivably have been a very large, aberrantly patterned leopard, explaining why its footprints resemble those of a gigantic leopard. Bernard Hoovelmans argued against this possibility, writing that it was difficult to imagine how even a genetic abnormality could turn the plain coat of a lion or the spotted coat of a leopard into the brindled grey coat of a mungwa. Bernard Hoovermans theorised that the animal could have been an undiscovered giant species of the African golden cat. Although a normal golden cat only measured up to four and a half feet in length, they display a wide variety of coat colours and patterns. Its pelage can vary in colour from gold through a wide range of reds, browns and greys to a melanistic or black form and superimposed upon the diverse range of background colours, there can sometimes be an equally broad spectrum of dark spotted patterns too. Although it isn't very large, even the regular African golden cat inspires fear and superstition throughout its range, as it is reputed to be extremely savage and bloodthirsty. Additionally, some eyewitnesses claim that the mungwa does not roar but purrs like a domestic cat. While lions and leopards cannot purr, the throat structure of the African golden cat means that it does purr. According to Mel and Fiona Sunquist, at around the same time that the Mungwa was carrying out its attacks, societies of witch doctors known as Mujobo, or Lion Men, in Tanganyika's Singida area, ran a lucrative extortion business in the early 20th century by threatening to turn themselves into lions and kill people who did not pay them. Many people were murdered by young men dressed as lions, wearing lion paws as gloves on their hands and feet. Carl Schuker speculates that the killings which occurred during Hitchin's tenure could also have been the work of the Mjobo, who could have faked the tracks and placed clumps of grey hair from any animal in the hands of their victims. Schuker feels that this is the most plausible theory regarding the killings. I also believe that this is the most likely explanation for these attacks, Alongside simple misidentification, the Mungwa is clearly a legendary animal and fulfills something of a bogeyman role in East Africa. If this creature was a real animal that looked exactly as described in these reported encounters, I would like to suggest that it would be a close relative of cheetahs and cougars. The fact that the Mungwa cannot roar, but instead is said to purr, means that it would have to be a member of Felinae, the small cat lineage. Unlike pantherine cats such as lions and tigers, members of felinae lack the hyoid structure that would enable them to roar. Thus, my interpretation of this cryptid would be that it represents a more basal representative of the cheetah lineage. These animals were larger, slower and more cougar-like than modern cheetahs, and the mungwa could possibly have evolved from these, moving into a large, solitary hunting niche in Tanzania's coastal forests. This would also explain the presence of stripes on the creature's coat, as it would inhabit an ecological role similar to those of tigers, stalking their prey at night with their distinctive coats breaking up the cat's outline to potential prey. Anyway, just a bit of fun speculation. If the mungwa was a real cat, what do you think it could be? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching everyone. More Alter Earth stuff coming up next week, so be sure to tune in and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.